Hi, School of Rock. Daryl Nutt here again. Today I'm going to be talking about when a drummer subs with a band for the very first time. When a drummer is the substitute drummer to fill in for one or two gigs or a weekend or something like that. For when a band's drummer is on vacation or is sick and uh, can't make it to the gig. In this segment, we're going to talk about the basic information you need to get, the material, which is very important, things you need to know on the gig, and then we're going to talk about the extra mile that I've learned to do over the years. And, and then the last thing I'm going to talk about is my in-ear setup, which really helps me on the gig because I can hear everything nice and clear and, and I can catch cues better and stuff like that. And the setup is super, super simple and it didn't cost a lot of money, a couple hundred bucks to uh, get a nice little in-ear system going for my live gigs. So the most basic information you need to know is the date, the time, and the location of the gig. The date could be that day, it could be two weeks from now, whatever. The time has a couple little factors to it. Not only is it the time of the gig, when it starts and when it ends, also you need to know what time do I need to be set up by. Typically for corporate gigs and weddings, you have to be set up in the afternoon or even in the morning sometimes because they don't want musicians making noise and sound checking while there's other stuff going on in the room. So really quickly, a three hour gig could turn into a eight to 10 hour day. So you need to know those factors about time. Location, not just the name of the venue or the name of the country club or the wedding hall, you need to know the address or something specific about the name. I know here in Southwest Florida, I've gone to the wrong venue a couple times because the band leader only gave me the name. I put the name in my uh, navigation and I, it took me to a different place because I didn't have the correct address. Um, I, if you're in Southwest Florida, you know that there's several places called Pelican Landing, Pelican Marsh, uh, Moorings. There's many different versions of all of these names for country clubs and apartment uh, 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 subdevelopments, rather. So it really helps to get the actual name and address of the place you're going. Um, I've done it. I've gone to the wrong place. Luckily, it was a country club that was similar to the name of the country club I was supposed to be at, and they were only like a mile apart. So I, it didn't really make me late at all. It was just a little bit confusing. And I felt bad that I didn't get more details. Another thing you wanna do is make sure you find out the compensation for the gig. Find out how much the gig pays. It's very important to have this defined up front. Um, you don't wanna spend a 10 hour day playing a wedding and finding out you're only getting $50. The next thing I'd recommend is find out what kind of gig it is. Is it an outdoor tiki hut or on the beach gig where you can, you know, kind of take it easy, it's a little bit looser? Or is it a corporate gig? Is it a wedding? Is it, do, what drums do I need? Is it a jazz gig where I need, you know, a small little jazz kit? Or is it a concert where I need my regular full size drum set with all my cymbals and everything? So find out what kind of gig it is that will help you decide what types of drums to bring, what cymbals to bring, that kind of thing. Also find out if you need microphones uh, or if you just need a kick and an overhead mic or do you need a full set of mics, kick, snare, toms, overheads, all that stuff. Um, and find out if, if it's a concert situation, that stuff might already be provided. So find that out as well. Another question to ask for the basic information is, does the band use sequences? Do you need to have a click track given to you? So you'll definitely need an in-ear setup for that situation. Or if they don't have a click track and you're just playing with tracks, with backing tracks, you definitely are gonna need a monitor um, close to you because you don't wanna get off of the sequence. Or use your in-ear monitors, which I'll talk about in my in-ear rig a little bit later here. Another basic information question is what is the dress code for the gig? If it's a tiki hut or beach gig, you could probably wear khakis and a, a t-shirt of sorts or a, a nice little casual beach shirt. But if it's a corporate gig, you're, you're gonna need a, a jacket and a tie and possibly a tuxedo. Sometimes you can get away with just a dress shirt and a tie. You don't need a jacket. You just need to find that stuff out. And for some gigs, some corporate gigs and weddings and some of those venues, they have a certain dress code for how you load in your gear, not just the actual gig but you can't wear jeans or t-shirts, period. So you need to make sure you have like 
tan pants or black pants and a decent shirt, a casual shirt probably, but it's probably gonna be a button up. So you wanna make sure you know that because you don't wanna get reprimanded on a gig that you're subbing for another band because you have a t-shirt and Daisy Dukes on when you get to the Ritz Carlton. So that's something to be considerate of and find out in the basic information about what you need to wear. Find out if it is a long gig, find out if you are being provided food. If you're gonna be there for 10 hours, are they gonna provide food for the band? Sometimes if it's a wedding or a corporate gig, they'll have a separate green room for the band and usually there's like buffet trays um, of hot food that we can all just kind of help ourselves to. That's the best kind. Um, sometimes they give you what's called a vendor meal and that's usually a, a sandwich, a apple, a cookie and a bag of chips. It's not supposed to like fill you up but it's supposed to keep you going for a six hour gig or something like that. And if that is not provided, or you're not playing at a restaurant where you're allowed to order and maybe get a discount on the food, if it's a long gig, you might want to consider bringing a cooler with some of those little ice packets in it, and maybe some power bars, some water, a sandwich, something that you can just run out to your car real quick, or you can bring in the venue with you when you have some downtime, and you can eat that in the green room and not have to worry about you know, being lightheaded on the gig because you haven't eaten in seven hours. Let's talk about the material for the gig that you're subbing. Um, you definitely want to ask the band leader or the musical director for a complete song list. It doesn't have to be a set list necessarily of you know the songs in order. That's helpful, but at least get a complete song list if possible and have them mark off the songs that they definitely will not be playing. That way you don't waste any time learning songs that you're never going to play with this band. I've been in that situation where I've spent you know, a couple hours learning songs and I get to, to the gig and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, we haven't learned that one yet. Uh, that would have been nice information to know before I learned the song. So definitely find out what songs that they are not gonna do that's on their set list. And also you might wanna check off all of the songs that you already know that you don't have a problem with playing. If you send that back to them, they already have a whole bunch of songs that they know you know and they will pick from those. They might adjust their gig to fit around the songs that you already know to make everything go a little bit smoother. And when you get the song list, the songs that you don't know that the band will definitely play, make some notes, review them. Go on Spotify and, and listen to these songs, make some notes, maybe tempo references or, or just some little cheat sheet so you, if it's a song you're totally not familiar with, you will have an idea of how it goes and you'll be a little bit more prepared for the subbing gig. These are things to know and to utilize while you're actually on the gig. Number one, listen, 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 listen. listen. I can't stress that enough. Pay attention to everything around you. The guitar player, the keyboard player, the bass player, the singer. Keep eye contact with everybody all the time. Do not look down at your snare drum while you're playing and paying attention to just you. Don't stare off in the space while you're playing. Always keep eye contact with all of the musicians the best you can. If you watch me play with a band that I'm subbing in, I'm like this. I'm paying attention to everybody all the time. And that's the only way you're gonna get through a gig like this because you don't know who's gonna be giving you cues. You don't know if the tempo might be a little bit off and you're staring into space and they're trying to tell you to bring the tempo down you're not gonna know that because you're not paying attention. So listen, 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 eye contact, eye contact, eye contact, always. And be aware of what's coming next in a song, especially if it's a song you're not that familiar with. Um, some bands do things in a different way. They do breakdowns in different places. They do the bridge. They'll do extra choruses. They'll do extra solos. So you just wanna be aware and anticipate when things can happen. Typically at the end of a guitar solo, that could be a good spot to break it down for a breakdown chorus. At the end of a bridge, you might go to a solo. Be aware that when they go somewhere, you're ready. You're, you're ready to make a change. You're ready to go to that next section of the song. And that also applies to endings of songs, especially if you're not familiar of a typical ending toolbox that this band might have, the, uh, the, the certain endings that they pick from for certain types of songs. So just really pay attention when the song feels like it's going to end, 
just watch them. And if there is a train wreck, there are ways to get out of that. And the way I do it is I will typically, if there's a train wreck and we kind of all end at the wrong place, instead of like laughing about it and making a big joke about it, I'll just, in tempo, I'll hit the snare and the floor tom, bump, 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 snare, and a big arc crash. Big ending, everybody knows where we're gonna hit that last note again. Even if we messed up a minute ago or a second ago, the audience will have no idea. They'll hear something and then they'll see the band in unison, all together, boom, end the song. Uh, I, I'll, I'll actually demonstrate some of those, some of the ways you can get out of an ending. Um, and I'll go ahead and do that now. And this will help you, uh, give you an idea. You don't have to panic, go, oh no, I missed the ending. You can go, hey, we all missed the ending, but guess what? Bam, 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 bam. Here we go. Bam. And you all end together. The audience has no idea. And the band has confidence in you that if there is a mess up or a train wreck, you're going to get them out of it. And everybody's going to be a little bit happier and the mood will be a little bit lighter that you did that. So here's some examples of getting out of a train wreck. One of the most important things to consider while you're on a gig and you're subbing with a new band, people you don't know, or people you, that you barely know, you know them from the local scene, but you don't know them, they're not your bandmates. Number one, just be polite, be gracious, be professional. Don't be negative at all. You're there to make their gig go smoothly because their drummer can't be there. Make it the best experience for them which will in turn give you a great experience subbing with this band. So now I want to talk about going the extra mile. And to me what that means is promoting on social media if it's a public performance with this band that you're subbing with. If it's a corporate gig or a private gig, obviously you don't want to promote it. You might want to say thank you to the band members or the band leader after the fact but you don't really need to promote it beforehand because the public can't really go to it. But if it is a public gig at a bar or a restaurant or something like that, ask the band leader first if it's okay to promote it on social media. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna say, of course. Definitely do that, promote it. And then after the gig, if you had a great time, show your pictures that you took, any video that you took, and tell everybody that you had a great time playing with this band. It's all positive energy, it's all good stuff. A way that I go the extra mile is it's very simple and I don't even know how I came up with the idea, but in the last year, I've been the sub drummer for 18 different bands. A couple of the bands, I'm sort of the first call drummer, but if I can't do it, they get a sub. 18 different bands. So I wanted to find a way to go the extra mile and, and, and bring a little bit extra happiness to these gigs that I was subbing for. So what I did is I printed out the band name or the logo, I, I would grab it from Facebook, take it over the Kinko's and print it on 11 by 17 paper so it was kind of big, and then I would laminate it, and then I put Velcro on the back of it. And then I put the other side of the Velcro on my white bass drum head. So it's a simple little thing, it's, it's going the extra mile, and it brings a little bit of extra joy to the subbing gig. Now I wanna talk about the importance of in-ear monitors especially on a subbing gig because it's a new adventure for you. You don't know where the cues are gonna be. You don't really know where the song's gonna go. So sometimes the singer will say something on the mic like, hey, let's break it down or let's give the drummer a drum solo, something like that. If you can't hear that because the acoustics in the room say it's all glass and there's re reflections all over the place and you don't have a monitor, 
you're not going to hear those cues and you're not going to catch when the band's doing something. So it's very important to be able to hear the vocals, be able to tell when the song's going somewhere based on cues. I have a small little mixer that I use with my Shure in-ear monitors. It's a super simple setup and it's super easy to, to, to use. If I'm giving a bass drum mic and a overhead mic to the sound mixer of the band to go through their PA, I also have a separate kick drum mic and a, a separate overhead that I use just for my mixer so I can hear the drums and then I'll take a quarter inch cable and come out of their mixer's headphone amp or sometimes an auxiliary send, a monitor send from their mixer and I plug that into my mixer. So I have a separate volume for what's the vocals and whatever's coming through the PA. Typically the vocals are louder than everything else in a PA, which is great for me because I can actually hear the vocal and I have control over that on my mixer. But I, again, I have control over the bass drum and the overhead, which also, if they give me cues verbally off the mic with my overhead, but kind of in the center of the band, I can hear what they're saying to me way better than if they're over there and I'm back here, I can't hear that. But if, if they kind of say it in my direction, I can hear those cues on the overhead microphone. It's giving me a little bit of the room. So let's recap. If you're subbing for a band for the very first time, there's a bunch of things you need to know. First off, you need to know details about the gig, the date, the time, the location, the dress code, what kind of gig it is, if there's food supplied, you're going to need to know the song list. What songs do I need to learn? What songs do I not need to learn? While you're on the gig, you want to be professional, polite, courteous. Make sure you listen to all band members. Pay attention, make eye contact with all band members so you get the proper cues uh, for endings, for breakdowns, for solos, for tempo changes. Uh, pay attention to everybody in the band. Do not zone out, always pay attention. Sometimes you want to go the extra mile and promote the gig on social media. Sometimes you want to do like I did with my little bass drum names that Velcro right on the bass drum. And lastly, you want to have a good in-ear rig if you can get one for a few hundred dollars. It'll definitely help you hear the band better, hear the singers better, hear cues better, and it'll allow you to hear yourself better, your drums better. It'll protect your hearing at the same time because you can control the level that's going into your head. So I hope this mini lesson was informative. I hope you learned something from it. I have 25 years worth of experience subbing in bands. So these are all the things I've picked up along the way and I'm more than happy to share them with you. And I hope you enjoyed it. So be sure and check out the School of Rock Fort Myers YouTube page and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Daryl Nutt and this is a little mini lesson. Thanks for checking it out.